and family, friends, m relationships. I don't like being messy. And yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Shanice. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Girl, I'm so excited to be in front of this camera. You have no clue. Um, <laughs> I cannot, I can't stop smiling. Um, so y'all, I plan to take a month break from content creation and I wound up taking three, four months off. And uh, there were so many times I wanted to pick up this camera and record something or myself or a video and so many ideas I had, but it's like, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to it because it just didn't feel, I didn't feel, my heart wasn't really like where it was supposed to be for me to be able to do that. And it's like, when God says to move, that's when I'll move. When God says to be still, I you be still. There's a scripture in the Bible about that as well. Matter of fact, let's get to the sponsorship. We have a sponsor, um, Zondervan, New International Version Study Bible is our sponsor for today. Um, this will be linked in my Amazon storefront. Yes, your girl made one. I'm very proud of myself, so kudos to me for that. So yeah, there's a scripture in the Bible. I, I don't really know. I can't give you all the context because I would have to go reference it, but it was like, uh, I, th I don't know if it was the Israelites, I don't, I don't know, but they were in the, in the desert and when the cloud, when the rain would come, they would be still, when the, when the cloud would move, they would move or something like that along those lines. So it, it, was, it was real. And right now I'm fasting, so I won't be back until March and... By the time you see this video, I probably would have put out some content on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. It's everything nice um, or everything nice, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I've been fasting for two weeks now because we'll get into that later, whatever the case. This video is about frequently asked questions. On Instagram, I put up uh, like a, a poll, if you want to call it. And I asked you guys to ask me questions. And we came across some really good ones. Surprisingly, they weren't surface. I, they were, there were some surface ones. But we also had some good ones. So I'm very happy about that. So I'm going to answer those. It's also kind of like a get to know me for my new subscribers. Um, so like you get to know the way I think and see if, you know, I'm your cup of tea or if I'm not. I was going through the questions. Not going to lie. I read, you know, this is not going to be... You know, I'm just reading them first time seeing them. I've read them and I got a uh, very emotional, <laughs> like thinking about what kind of answer I could get. So let's just hope that I don't get emotional on this camera because that's gonna be different for me. I want—I don't want to say embarrassing, um, because I have a, a, I have a, a thing about people who cry on camera. It's kind of like whatever. So, um, but yeah, so we're just going to hop right into it. So the first question is, what is something, it says what broke me. I'm not broken. <laughs> I'm not broke because on this solid rock I stand, on this firm foundation I stand. And let me give a little side note. I don't like when people say, oh, I don't want to be too preachy. I don't want to throw God in it, blah, blah, blah. That's me, Okay. I am going to be preachy, whatever you want to call it. That's just my personality at this stage in my life. Uh, God has his hands in every single thing I do and everything that I am. So if you don't want to hear that, bye. I want to rephrase that and say, what is something that has hurt me to bring me to a turning point to seek wisdom about why this is happening or why why did this happen to me? So there's tears to it. It's not just one thing. A parental relationship strain that I've been, that I'm going through. Does that make sense? Um, my father and I 
like I used to be a full-fledged daddy's girl like my father was a fun parent like my dad was like the Cosby show um family my family was like the Cosby family like all my friends would tell me this and this is how I viewed my dad when I was younger and then I became an adult and I viewed him as his character was as an adult alcoholism and addiction plays a part in the strain on my relationship that I have with my father. You just never know the person that you're gonna get with him. And our interactions have not been peaceful because of the alcoholism entering the chat, okay, hello? Like, don't get me wrong, I am grateful to have both of my parents in my life. I'm grateful that they are still alive. Um, but the things that my father has said to me and the things that he's done to me, um, as an adult, I can never view him the same. And, and that's something that I had, that I've struggled with for a long time and still struggling with the ways that like people can max that, like, like people can go outside and not even know what what somebody's dealing with you know internally and he, which he does he masks it well maybe he does maybe he doesn't i don't know and so when i see that i be like it's just like so you are you doing this on purpose do you act these ways on purpose because when you get outside you, you you're so friendly and you're so nice and when you in here it's not like that so yeah so that's just something that has brought me really low because I never thought that I would have the relationship I have now with my father. I had to, you know, seek understanding and just realize that this man is a human and people battle demons every single day and don't even know that they are battling demons and call it a disease and just, it's just that. And not knowing that, no, it's a demon. It's a, it's a curse. It's you think that this runs in the family? Well, it doesn't have to, and it can stop with you if you are strong enough. But if you are weak and you succumb to the trying to figure it out your own way instead of seeking God's face, this is corrosion starts to happen, and so yeah, so that's one tear that um one tier of things another tier is something that has broke me with in a romantic relationship wise i was in this is like my longest relationship that i've had with a man i was 18 i knew him since i was 18 up until this day well i don't know now but up until uh, recently right 18 years old i got in a relationship with a man who was older than me then I went away to college, right? And came back. And while I was away, we didn't speak much, just here and there. And I came back and we got back together eventually, right? And college is a whole different story. So we came back and got into a relationship and so many years went by and I'm in a relationship and I don't really know you know, I didn't know he had a kid. He had a kid for me. Um, that put a strain on my relationship. Um, to find him in a bed with another girl, that put a strain on my relationship. And don't, and I stayed. So many other things have happened and I stayed because I really thought that this man cared about me. Like he physical, physically being physical abusive, being mentally abusive, made me think made me feel like oh he loves me he doesn't want to see me with anybody else and which rewired my whole way of thinking when we would break up and i when i would move on to other relationships and think that oh if you're not yelling at me if you're not hitting me then you don't love me or you don't care about me which is pretty um effed up right which is the wrong way of thinking and it cut into my self-esteem and my self-worth and it made me feel like regardless of the way he was treating me if he would yell at me or get 
mad at me or hit me or whatever, I would have to go above and beyond just to show him that, you know, I love you and I'm and I'm here for you. And like, this is a person that has seen me at my lowest and he's there for me. So I don't want to lose him because not many people have seen me as low as he has. But in all reality, he's brought me very low and he's the reason why. He's not the only reason, but he is a part of the reason, a big part of the reason, because I can't give him that much credit. Um, my, I, I got to take credit too for my, my actions and my decisions. Um, why, I've, why I've been brought so low. Why I didn't believe in myself. Um, so, and I do not victimize myself. So don't even, don't take this or me, me sharing any kind of information like this as me victimizing myself. I don't do that. I understand that the way my life is, and let's make it general, the way people's lives are, are because of this, the decisions that they've made, be it, be it a smart decision or a bad decision. It is your fault. <laughs> I did not have to. The the minute that um, I found out he had a child, I could have left. But no, I stayed because I'm knee deep, and I want to think that oh, I I'm I'm I got the prize. I'm the winner. I'm the girl that's still here. Find him in the bed with another girl. Oh, I could have left, but I wanted to be like, no, I'm here. He wants to be with me. He doesn't want to be with you. Um, the minute he he bruise my ribs or fracture my nose i could have been like i'm out but i stayed because he doesn't mean it because right after he does it he apologizes and he's so sorry and i understand like anger consumes people and the way people um the way people express their anger is different and i can take it i'm a big girl i'm 510 i'm 180 like i could hold my own like we would be fighting we would be fighting because i don't back down and that's something that I'm not proud of, but it's just like, it's helped me be like, oh, I can hold my own. <laughs> so yeah, don't think that I'm victimizing myself. I'm not, I'm just giving you some information, that's it. And nobody would know any of these things because I take it to the Lord in prayer <laughs> because that's all I can do. God has, God had to bring me so low in that relationship. Like, and I've said something about it previously on this on my channel like the blessings stopped for me people will block your blessings and every time I would be with that person well nothing be going on for me and I just had to and my best friend at the time just like for somebody for me to release with and like you know I wasn't in therapy so I had my best friend at that time and um she she actually brought it to the light for me like He's blocking your blessings. Every time you're with him, nothing's moving from you for you. Every time you leave him, things be moving for you. Like he's his his insecurity and his um his jealousy, and he became a a, a he he started to compete with me, and then he became my enemy. Like. I can't have a partner like that. And that's what actually happens to me in a lot of my relationships. The people, the, the men try to compete with me because of the amount of attention I used to get from my social platforms. Uh, if I'm going out, then they must go out. And, and it's just, it was just an imbalance, right? And so that is one relationship that has brought me to a low point and really hurt me a third tier of a relationship is friend of friendships friendships and i know i've said this on my channel as well it's hard for me to make let's talk about my female friends i'm not going to talk about my guy friends female friends it's been hard for me to have solid female friendships for some reason and i really can't figure out why most recently i've had to mourn a friendship like i've had to grieve a friendship like because that person is dead to me like that and that's another reason why i had to take a break from my socials because my heart 
my heart was hurt and I, my heart had to be in the right place for me to for me to move forward because it's easy to get when you have platforms it's easy to get on something and throw subs and it's easy to throw shots and it's easy it's easy to um to sub people and I don't want to do that because I don't want to block my blessings. So I had to do this the right way. I had to, my heart had to be the right, in the right posture. Um, I had to go through a grieving process. In my friendships, I give people so many chances. And I'm not saying I'm the perfect friend. I'm a very low maintenance friend. Like, we don't have to talk every day. I don't got to see, I could see you go six months without seeing you and then see you to seven months and be like, hey girl, let's catch up. What's been going on? Like fill me in i am okay because i understand that i have a life that i need to provide for myself i have i cannot be going out girl and i always thought this too i wish i would have picked up my camera i thought my life vlogging would be how it used to be when i would be going out when i was bartending all the time um and it when it turned out not to be like that it turned to be it turned out to be very boring but um I'm not the friend that's going to be going out every weekend. I have to save my money. I'm not the friend that's going to be on the phone with you all day and all night because when I get on the phone, I get lazy. I'm not going to be doing anything. And I like to be productive. I'm already lazy, okay, on my own. I don't need anybody to contribute to that. And there are some times with some phone conversations, they get people working. But it's not like that with everybody. So, right, I don't like being on the phone. I don't want to go out all the time. I have a life that I see for myself that I need to put the sad, the um, the pleasures of right now, I need to put them on the back burner, right? And I'm okay with that. I have been surrounded by women that are not low maintenance friends and that's where the imbalance is as well. And I'm going to use this word imbalance a lot because that's just what it is. So yeah, back to me, I give people chances after I confront a situation. And when it starts to become like a pattern and I see that I'm being undervalued because the same thing or because of manipulation or because of false narratives or because of lies, I have to remove myself and I have to keep my peace. There have been so many female friendships, close female friendships that I've had, that I've had to sever because of manipulation. I don't do well with that. Because it's it's just not it's not just. And if you're gonna go by the Bible, the Lord loves just actions. You have to be fair. And I'm not I, I don't I don't wanna argue in a friendship. I don't wanna fight in a friendship. You, ugh, I can't even say that because things like that happen, like arguments or, or disagreements happen with two people who come from two different worlds, just like in a relationship, arguments happen. But like, I don't, I don't want to feel like my friends are jealous of me or my friends don't support me when I'm a friend who is down for the down like I'm with the shits whatever you want to do you know you could call Shanice and Shanice would be there um you you have a business I'll support I'll post I'll show up I'll buy I'll buy and I'll buy again um you have anything anything I as for my for people that I consider friends I show up and when I see that it's not being reciprocated I gotta gracefully bow out yeah, that's recently happened to me and, and it brought me real, real low because in friendships also comes codependency. And my mother told me, she was like, you know, it's not healthy. Codependency is not healthy. When you when when you have somebody every day, even even in a marriage, it's not healthy. Right? And I'm gonna tie all of this in to these are people, oh, and I'm so glad I did not cry. These are all people that I have trusted, right? I put my trust in, or I have, they've seen me vulnerable. We've had many transparent moments. And so when these tears are disrupted, I 
tend, and I've said this on my channel before as well, um, I tend to take longer times healing from things. And I said, I wish I had a faster healing process. I, I still do to this day. And in the Bible, it talks about your kinship betraying you. It talks about romantic relations, relationships betrayal. And it talks about friends becoming enemies because of whatever reason. Um, as T.D. Jakes puts it, you know, your haters and you have it's just, it's just a lot of messy stuff and I don't like being messy. I don't like being messy and and family, friends, relationships, I don't like being messy. And yeah. So that's something those are some things that have brought me very low um, that I can speak on now because of the healing that I have been through. That was pretty long. That was long. I'm sorry. The next question is what are you sorry about? I'm sorry about the time that I wasted. I wasted so much time chasing love or distracting myself. I wish I was one of those girls who had their head in the books. I wish I was one of those girls who picked up a trade and instead of going to school. Like, don't get me wrong, my college experience was amazing, but for my adult self, I wish I would have picked up a trade and flourished off of that. I would have been a plumber making bank. I'm sorry for thinking that I was not good enough, I'm not good enough. I can never get that time back and I probably would have never had the experiences that I've had had I kept my, stayed on my straight and narrow and not try to distract myself from my responsibilities in my life. So yeah, I'm, I'm real sorry about that. Because time waits for no one. You understand? Time, you're here today and you're going tomorrow. That's just how quick it goes. For real, for real. The next question is, what did I grow from? I've grown from being emotionally immature. I've grown from feeling entitled. If my name is not on it, I'm not entitled to anything. That can be from work, play, home, whatever. My entitlement and my emotional maturity has grown from from my experiences that I've been through. And also I have to understand that just because I am on a new path of living does not mean that everybody's there. Just because I think that common sense is common, it's not so common. Just because, you know, I'm emotionally maturing, a man can be 45 years old and still have the mentality of a 21 year old man and you know i gotta i gotta understand i gotta keep understanding that day by day every day everybody not on the same wavelength as as me as you and that does not make you better than anybody that does not make me better than anybody that just everybody goes at their own pace right the next question is what still haunts you Lying, cheating, stealing, thieving, disloyal, untrustworthy, deceitful men haunt me. Period. That's it. Because there are, there are men who will waste your time. There are men who will lie dead in your face. And you know how they say, well, there's three sides to the story. There's your side, my side, and the truth. No, you can say that, but there's one side and it's just the truth. Let's be honest here. When I spit facts back at you and what you spitting back at me is emotion, I don't, there's no, you're lying, right? <laughs> like, yeah, so that's what haunts me. The next question is what do I struggle with? So I struggle with showing up 100% for myself, 110% for myself. I struggle with doubting myself. I struggle with the embarrassment of thinking that I should be way, way, way further in life than I am right now. I struggle with thinking I shouldn't have certain issues. Um, why would I do this to myself? Uh, if I'm such a good person, why, why am I going through whatever I'm going through? So I struggle with that. But I know my life is a journey 
your life is a journey. Our lives are journeys of becoming, of wisdom, of being enlightened. I'm just glad that I'm enlightened enough to know now that I have to stay grounded in the Lord to fulfill his purpose for my life. Like, that's just it. And I feel like many of us are struggling with many of the same things. I don't feel like I'm alone in that. Maybe I am, but I don't think so. And so now we are at our final question, the infamous question of, are you single? Are you married? Why are you not married? Why don't you have kids? There were so many variations of this question. And so am I single? I mean, like I'm not married. So essentially I am single. Um, why am I not married? Because God told me that I have to wait and I can't force a connection. I can't force a marital connection. Have I been proposed to? Have I been proposed to more than once? Have you proposed? Have you been proposed to? Did you get married to the first person that proposed to you? Or that you proposed to? Do you feel like you should have waited and not have gotten married to that first person? There are a lot of questions. But I am in a relationship. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a big thumbs up if you think I deserve it. I don't want to pressure you now, okay? I'll see you in the next video. Exactly in it. Hi. What is it giving me? Can you see what I want to know? No, Lee. No, Lee, oh, Lee, oh, Lee. Alright, let's see how it looks.